that we as a race of people were clueless. In fact, I got this here for you. I got a guy named David Court. That's mm. who I got turned on to. He's got a book called The Great Turning. And you just said some while ago about this movement you got going on. And this is what he said. He can't, he went, it's kind of like what they did over in Paris. They did this back in Rio de Janeiro back in the 90s. When he left there, they were going to create a thing called an Earth Community. He said, the term comes from the Earth Charter, a declaration of independence, of universal responsibility created through multi-year collaborative process involving hundreds of organizations, thousands of individuals of diverse religious, faith, culture, race, language, and nationality in order to build that kind of Earth Community. I knew then we were in trouble because we didn't have anybody even in the field. So if they making decisions like they are right today, I just left a meeting, it's white people making the decisions about what should be going on in the black community. We're not even really sitting at the tables. And the ones of us who are sitting at the tables are the kind, the caliber you know, that aren't going to rock no boat because they need that job. Mm. So let me let me jump in there and, and ask you some key questions then because what some of the things you're saying is fascinating and and – uh, the thing that jumps out to me the most is your your environmental action and the lack of knowledge um, that uh, a lot of people in the black community even have with regard to the importance of environmental action. Uh, I was reading an article that uh, that you wrote about the uh, coal industry, uh, the coal fire plants that were in walking distance of low income, moderate income housing, and the impact that it had in that community. So tell me, tell me more about um, about how you are mobilizing and educating to bring that education on um, in the environmentalism. It's been a, it's been a, 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 I don't want to use the word fragment. It's been a strategic plan because the community is not only clueless, they're also very resistant to even having these kinds of conversations. Mm. Um, uh, and it's it, because when we start getting into it, the environmentalism in this country, it gets pretty deep. But that's not just black. That's across the board. Uh, uh, the, the, the people have not had what's called environmental literacy. But the process that I'm using, I became the green czar. I, I got a very unique city. I think Kansas City, Kansas is, is, has, a pro, has, a, has a makeup that should be seen and, and, and copied around this whole country. Hmm. Uh, they, I heard the brother that was talking from Missouri talking about that. I listened to some of your stuff, though. I had to do that to know who I was going to be talking to. I appreciate I did, it. I did my homework, okay? okay. All right. <laughs> uh, and he was talking about uh, they had community, but he didn't have – some places he was going to show you mm -hmm. had community policing. Right. Kansas City, Kansas has community policing. They have an organization that's called Livable Neighborhoods. It consists of about 144 neighborhood groups throughout the city, multicultural. They meet once a month. So what I started doing is I went over and attached myself to that organization and became their green czar. And then they started inviting me to their meetings in conjunction with me working with the Sierra Club. See, I was the first black board member for the Sierra Club. Mm -hmm. but I was working with them to go in and teach people. You got to teach people so to get their get their interest, I started with uh, uh, saving your cost on your utility bills. Mm -hmm. So I would go in and make a presentation and turn them to all the stuff that's available today to help you cut your cost on your utility bill. You work at night, you at home, but if you wasn't at home and you were somewhere else and you had to come home, if you don't mm -hmm. have a system that's going to cut your lights on and off while you're gone, you're going to have to turn your light off at at 5 o'clock or four, 2 o'clock in the afternoon because, you know, when you get home at 10 o'clock, it's going to be dark. Right. Well, when you live in our community, that tells that would be I want to break in that brother's house when he's not home. When your light's on at 2, two o'clock in the afternoon, that brother's probably not at home, okay, mm -hmm. after a while of watching that. So I taught them how they could buy the little switches to put on the lights, showed them about, taught them about EFLs or CFL light bulbs. And then what would happen at the end of the meeting, we would give all the, the all the samples that I bought. We'd have drawings, and I'd give them away to people, stuff they could go home and use. But then we'd have a drawing where we would go into their house and do a complete makeover. In other words, I'd go in and take out all of their light bulbs, put in all new CFLs, and do all the caulking and the fix the plastic on the windows and all that stuff. But what happened, those people in that group would come back to their group meeting a couple of months and say, you know what, my utility bills have gone down. Yep. Now 
they calling me back to the media. Other groups are calling me to see how they can get a hold of that same stuff. And it just took off like 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 wildfire. Let me let me ask you a question here because I had a a comment in in the in one of our chat rooms. Um and I think you've already spoken to this, but I want to ask the question and then let you address it. Um, this idea that um, African Americans, but then I would just say poor uh, uh, people who are in poverty or people who are middle class, they're living paycheck to paycheck. You know, they don't have the energy or the time to focus on the environment because they're just trying to struggle and survive day to day. I think you just kind of answered that question, right? Because the very first thing you come with is being in uh, being green is actually something that can act, put money back in your pocket. It's a way for you to save money. That's what we went in the door with. So basically, when you start doing that, people will listen. My second area is grandbabies. See, most of the people in these groups in these neighborhoods are your elderly. Those are the ones that can afford to go to meetings and stuff, but they don't have anything else to do. If it's one thing black folks, the poor people, period, care about is the future of their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. They know the parents, the ones that are legit, are out there working their behinds off to make a living. They don't have time to be keeping up with those grandchildren. So I started teaching them why we need to teach our young, teach the next generation to love science. That's what I've been on now for the last like three years. After the uh, after the the bulls and the way we did it was I found an environmental organization. We don't have black environmental organizations. One reason called the people who, who allocate money don't really choose to give money to black organizations because we knew we haven't been around. We, we, we don't have the kind of scientist background with us that we need for, for credibility's sake. I got an organization I'm working with. It's called Moving Forward Network. It, ha it deals with goods movement. When, when uh, uh, it's been determined, that, that, that the diesel fuel is a carcinogen, mm. even though the United States hasn't given it its full approval. Every, every place else in the world is considered a carcinogen. So like right now here in Kansas City, because of a new intermodal they built, the carrier ships from China are going to start dropping off those. They're not going to drop off the, the, their, their cargo in L.A. and in Long Beach. They're going to put them on uh, Santa Fe trains, and they're going to come across country and grab them off here in the Kansas City area, which is going to cause the diesel truck uh, numbers to increase anywhere from twenty to 30,000 a day. Wow. That's it, brother. Nobody knows that. Nobody knows that, that that's going to be happening. You can't stop that. That's carcinogen. Every time that diesel emission comes out of those daggum trucks, we inhale that stuff. Some yeah. of that stuff is such a fine particle that you can inhale it straight into your bloodstream. Jesus, wow. We don't know that. We're talking about Flint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got those kind of circumstances happening all over, the, all over this country. So what my thing is we need to teach the American public, especially in the low-income communities, how to be citizen scientists. Here's the program. This, this environmental organization came in and worked with me, and, and they got a contract from EJ, from a environmental, from e, EPA, and it, it was to go into two high schools and teach those high school students how to scientifically test water. And I got all the pictures of that. I mean, they're out at the lakes, they're out at the rivers, they got the test tubes. I got the little brothers and Hispanics out there with their hoodies on. And I mean, it's a sight. It's, I'll send you some. Yo, I'm going to send you some of the pictures so uh, you can see them. Thinking, yeah. Man, it's a sight to see them little brothers down there, and they're teaching them how to find the animals that's in the water. They're down there picking up leeches and all kind of stuff, but they're learning. Now, the first group that we did, they, 